Pakistani American terrorist David Headley's deposition continued for the second day today. Headley exposed close nexus between Pakistan Army and terrorists. He also named Hafi Saeed as the mastermind of the 2611 Mumbai attacks and stated that the ISI provides financial and military support to LET. Three terror suspects deported from UAE for their alleged ISIS links remanded to 10 days NIA custody by a Delhi court. They were booked under charges of criminal conspiracy to identify radicalized recruits, train Indian citizens located in India and other friendly nations. Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Army Referral Hospital to meet Lance Nayak Hanuman Tapa, who was found alive after remaining buried for six days under 25 feet deep ice in Siachen. Describing Hanuman Tapa as an outstanding soldier, Prime Minister said that no words are enough to describe endurance and indomitable spirit of Lance Nayak Hanuman Tapa. President Pranam Mukherjee has called upon governors to play a persuasive role in improving the quality of education and educational institutions in their states. In his opening address at the 47th Conference of Governors at Rashtrapati Bhavan, the president called for continuing efforts at resolving all outstanding international issues through peaceful dialogue and negotiations. External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj led all party delegation paid homage to former Nepalese Prime Minister Shushil Koirala in Kathmandu. Members of the high-level delegation paid their last respects to Koirala at the Tashrat Rangashala Stadium in Kathmandu. Union Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Dharmendra Pradhan released the Northeast Hydrocarbon Vision 2030 in Gauhati. The document sets the target for developing Northeast as a dominant hydrocarbon hub. The minister said that oil and gas production from the Northeast will double by 2030. To showcase the richness of the Northeast to the rest of India, the central government will organize a three day exhibition come business summit during the 12th to the 14th of February at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi. Briefing the media, the Union Minister of State for Development of the Northeastern Region, Dr. Jitendra Singh, said that the aim of Destination Northeast is to bring the rest of India closer to the Northeast. Stating that internet cannot be allowed to become a monopoly of a few, Telecom Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said that Tri's order on differential pricing for data services has enhanced India's image in the net community world over and established its maturity. BJP has slammed the Akhilesh Yadav government in Uttar Pradesh over the Shamli incident that claimed the life of an eight-year-old child and a celebratory firing by Samajwadi party leaders on Sunday and demanded a CBI inquiry into the matter. In a media briefing in New Delhi, the BJP spokesperson Srikant Sharma today demanded CBI inquire into the death of the eight-year-old child. The Power Ministry has pledged to spend around 140 crore rupees through public sector undertakings under its administration to prepare 100 sportspersons for the Olympics in the next 10 years. This was announced by Power Minister Piyush Goel, who was speaking to the media on the sidelines of the India-Australia Energy Dialogue in Brisbane. Bihar government gave a green signal for the ambitious Patna Metro Rail project. With an investment of an estimated 16,960 crore rupees, the project is scheduled to be completed by the year 2021. A decision to this effect was taken by the state cabinet at its meeting chaired by the Chief Minister Nitish Kumar in Patna. In Germany, nine people were killed and more than 100 injured when two passenger trains collided head-on in a Bavarian spa town. According to the police, among the 108 people injured, 18 were in serious condition. The area was sealed off and alongside the rescue effort, a crash investigation has begun. In cricket, India Under-19 has entered the Under-19 World Cup Finals, beating Sri Lanka Under-19 in the first semi-final by 97 runs. Chasing a target of 267 runs, Sri Lanka could only manage to score 170 runs and 42.4 overs. India and Sri Lanka have begun the three-match T20 series. Sri Lanka won the toss and opted to bowl first on a green tinge surface in Pune. Team India started its innings in a shaky manner and managed to set a decent target of 102 runs for Sri Lanka. The Indian archery team won all five gold medals in the recurve event at the 12 South Asian Games in Shillong. All in all, India walked away with most medals, with 10 gold and 4 silver medals as Bangladesh got 3 silver and 3 bronze medals and placed in 2nd position. Bhutan positioned 3rd with a total of 5 medals.